sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Welcome brothers and sisters, we live in a world where the storms of life come suddenly and unexpectedly. Recently, we've witnessed the devastation caused by hurricanes in Florida and other places around the world. These natural disasters remind us of the fragility of life and the temporary nature of the material things we often put our trust in. Homes, possessions, and even lives can be swept away in an instant. But as followers of Christ, we are called to build our lives on something more solid, more eternal than the things of this world. Jesus speaks of this in Matthew 7, 24, 27, where he compares those who build their lives on his teachings to those who build their lives on the rock versus those who build on the sand. The storms of life come to everyone, but the foundation on which we build determines whether we will stand firm or fall. In this sermon, we will explore the deeper spiritual message behind natural disasters, like destructive hurricanes. While they are devastating and heartbreaking, they also offer us an opportunity to reflect on where we are placing our trust, whether in the fleeting things of this world or in the eternal kingdom of God. We will also offer prayers for those affected by these disasters and consider how we, as believers, can be the hands and feet of Christ in times of crisis. Let us begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, lifting up those who have been affected by the recent hurricanes and natural disasters. We ask that you provide comfort, peace, and strength to those who have lost so much. Lord, help us to understand that our hope is not in the things of this world, but in you alone. Teach us to build our lives on the solid foundation of Christ so that we may stand firm in the face of any storm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hurricanes and natural disasters like those we've witnessed in Florida remind us of the temporary nature of life and the things we possess. In an instant, homes can be destroyed, livelihoods lost, and entire communities devastated. But as painful as these experiences are, they point to a greater spiritual truth. This world is not our permanent home, and the things we accumulate here are not where our true security lies. 1 John 2, 15, 17 gives us this clear command, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We are often tempted to place our trust in the things we can see and touch, our homes, our possessions, our wealth. But the Bible warns us that these things are temporary and fleeting. They can be taken from us in a moment, and when they are, we are left to examine where our true hope lies. Do we place our hope in the things of this world, or do we place our hope in the eternal kingdom of God? When hurricanes and natural disasters strike, they shake our sense of security. They reveal how vulnerable we are and how little control we have over the forces of nature. But this is not a reason for despair. Rather, it is an invitation to shift our focus from the things of this world to the things of God. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 19, 21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The treasures we store up in heaven, our relationship with God, our love for others, our obedience to His Word are the only things that will last for eternity. Everything else will eventually fade away. In Matthew 7, 24, 27, Jesus presents us with a powerful metaphor. Building our lives on a rock versus building our lives on sand. Those who hear and obey His words 
are like the wise man who builds his house on a rock. When the storms come, the winds, the rains, the floods, his house stands firm because it is founded on a solid foundation. But those who hear his words and do not put them into practice are like the foolish man who builds his house on sand. When the storm comes, the house collapses and great was the fall of it. The question for us today is, on what foundation are we building our lives? Are we building on the shifting sands of this world, trusting in material possessions, status or security? Or are we building on the unshakable foundation of Jesus Christ? Natural disasters, like hurricanes, are a vivid reminder that the things of this world are fragile. They can be taken from us in a moment, leaving us with nothing but our faith. But if our lives are built on the solid foundation of Christ, we will not be shaken no matter what storms come our way. Jesus is the rock on which we must build our lives. Psalm 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. When we place our trust in Jesus, we are building on a foundation that cannot be moved. The world may throw its worst at us, storms, disasters, loss, but we will stand firm because our hope is in Christ alone. In times of crisis, we are often tempted to question God. Why does he allow natural disasters? Why do bad things happen? While we may not have all the answers to these questions, we do know that God is with us in the midst of the storm. Isaiah 43, 2 offers this comforting promise. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God does not promise us a life free from storms, but he does promise to be with us through them. As we reflect on the spiritual lessons of hurricanes and natural disasters, let us not forget to pray for those who are suffering. Families have lost loved ones, homes have been destroyed, and entire communities have been displaced. As followers of Christ, we are called to lift up those in need, both in prayer and in practical support. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Our prayers are powerful, and when we come together as the body of Christ to pray for those in need, God hears us and moves on their behalf. Let us take a moment now to pray for the families affected by the hurricanes and other natural disasters. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with heavy hearts for those who have been affected by the recent hurricanes and natural disasters. We lift up the families who have lost loved ones, the individuals who have lost their homes and the communities that have been devastated. We ask that you provide comfort, peace, and strength to those who are grieving. Lord, we pray for your protection and provision for those who are in need of shelter, food, and safety. Help them to rebuild their lives, not just physically, but spiritually as well. May they come to know you as their rock and foundation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we reflect on the devastation caused by hurricanes, we are reminded of Jesus' command to love not the things of this world, but to set our hearts on the kingdom of God. 1 John 2, 15, 17 tells us, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The things of this world, our homes, our possessions, our jobs, are not bad in themselves, but when we place our love, our trust, and our security in them, we are building on sand. Natural disasters, like hurricanes, remind us of how quickly the things we cherish can be taken away. But the kingdom of God is eternal and our love and devotion must be set on things above. Colossians 3, 2, 3 exhorts us, 
Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When we set our hearts on the things of God, we are building on a foundation that cannot be shaken. Our hope is not in the things of this world, but in the eternal promises of God. This does not mean we are indifferent to the suffering around us. On the contrary, when we have our hearts set on the kingdom of God, we are called to act with love and compassion toward those in need. Natural disasters provide us with an opportunity to be the hands and feet of Christ, to serve those who are hurting, and to point them to the only true source of hope, Jesus Christ. In recent years, as we witness increasingly severe hurricanes, storms, and natural disasters across the earth, a growing conversation has emerged around the potential influence of human manipulation in weather patterns, particularly through programs like high-frequency active auroral research programs. Many have begun to question whether these disasters are purely natural occurrences or if there are forces at play behind the scenes, altering weather patterns for unknown agendas. These weather programs are scientific programs that have been the subject of controversy and conspiracy. While its stated purpose is to study the ionosphere and enhance communications and surveillance capabilities, many believe it may also have the ability to manipulate weather systems. The concept of weather control has sparked concern, especially among believers, because it raises important questions about man's interference with God's creation and the potential consequences of such manipulation. Deuteronomy 10.14 reminds us, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. God is sovereign over creation. The Bible tells us that he controls the winds, the rain, and the natural world, and his design is perfect. However, humanity's pride and pursuit of power have often led to the desire to control or manipulate what only God should govern. If harpy and other forms of weather control are indeed affecting hurricanes and other natural disasters, it shows how far man is willing to go to play God with the world around him. Job 38, 22 23 speaks of the storehouses of snow and hail that God reserves for times of trouble, for the day of battle and war. God alone has the authority over the elements, and yet, humanity has always sought to seize this power for themselves, which can lead to dangerous consequences. Some believe that these unnatural disasters serve hidden agendas, whether economic, political, or even spiritual. Whether or not weather control is a reality, the truth remains that as believers, we are called to trust in the sovereignty of God above all else. While human efforts may try to manipulate and control the environment, it is ultimately God who has the final say. Psalm chapter 135 verse 7 says, He causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. Even in the midst of potential manipulation and uncertainty, we can trust that God is in control. As we consider the possibility of human interference in weather, we must be reminded that such interference often comes from pride and a desire to control what God has created. In the same way, the elites and those who seek power in this world manipulate the truth, deceive others, and work to advance their own agendas. These are the works of the enemy, who always seeks to distort God's creation and design. We, as believers, are called to stand firm in the truth and to build our lives on the foundation of Jesus Christ. No matter what forces, natural or man-made, come against us, we can be confident in the Lord's protection and guidance. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 encourages us with this promise. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It is essential to stay vigilant, discerning the times and the schemes of the enemy, and always bringing our concerns and questions before the Lord in prayer. Whether the storms we face are the result of natural forces, 
spiritual battles, or human manipulation, we can take comfort in knowing that Jesus Christ is our firm foundation. He is the rock on which we stand, and no matter how fierce the winds and waves may be, we will not be moved if our trust is in Him. Hurricanes and natural disasters remind us of the fragility of life and the temporary nature of the things we often place our trust in. But as followers of Christ, we are called to build our lives on the solid foundation of His Word and His promises. When the storms of life come, and they will, we can stand firm, knowing that our hope is not in the things of this world, but in the eternal kingdom of God. Let us remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 7, 24, 25. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. May we be like the wise man who built his house on the rock, placing our trust in Christ alone. Let us close in prayer, asking the Lord to strengthen us to build our lives on the solid foundation of his word and to give us the compassion to serve those affected by natural disasters. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that our hope is in you alone. Help us to build our lives on the solid foundation of Christ so that when the storms of life come, we will stand firm. We pray for those affected by hurricanes and other natural disasters, that you would provide them with comfort, peace, and provision. Use us, Lord, to be your hands and feet in serving those in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May God bless you abundantly for watching today and being here. We are excited to announce that season one, Bible Adventures for Children, the basic slideshow version is now available on our website for only $10 per month with unlimited access to the entire series of the Bible from the book of Genesis to Revelation. We're working hard every day on the 3D animated version which is coming very soon on our website and on Prime Video. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun, engaging, and educational way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children, because as you know the dark forces are targeting our children, and they are the future of our world and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We warmly invite you to not just support our ministry, but to join us as an essential part of the divine mission and purpose. Explore our website, awakeningrighteousness.com, where you'll find a free blog, inspiring Christian canvas art, faith-based clothing, and an extensive collection of Awakening Righteousness books. These valuable resources offer deeper insights into the profound teachings of the Bible, with each book serving as a guiding light, helping you unlock and embrace the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to truly understand the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a real difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. I love you. I'm here to help you as much as I can. May God bless you and guide you on your walk with Jesus Christ. God be with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.